Good save, Evan. Thank you. Take a seat. Hey, Ray, how's it going? Good, how are you? Doing well. Hey, coming into this, another big series, um, it, does it get uh, obnoxious at all when you know when you just get off playing the number one team, the number five team, and then you look at the schedule and it's number five again? Uh, no, I mean, that's that's when baseball becomes fun. I mean, playing against the best teams in the country, I mean, that's that's why I came to Texas A&M to, to compete against the best in the country every weekend. I mean, you don't have to really hype yourself up. I mean, the situation's big and everyone knows. And there's, I mean, there's going to be a full crowd this weekend. And I mean, 12 to 14,000. Uh, it'll be the first time we play in front of a, a full stadium this year. And, and I think everyone's just looking forward to it. And it's, it's another weekend for us to um, kind of do something about uh, some failures we've had this year. Yeah, on, on that note, we had, there's what, uh, three, no, four series left. Um, do you, is it, especially with where this team is ranked in, in postseason aspirations, is this kind of becoming a, a must win series with uh, where y'all need to be? Yeah, I mean, every game at this point is a must win. I mean, um, not that we should be putting pressure on ourselves, but we need to attack every game and, and win every inning. And I think, especially late in the game, learn uh, how to really close a game out uh, offensively and on the mound and defensively. And, be able to score late to put teams away and and put zeros up on the board and keep teams off from the scoring late in games and that'll be really the key to our success this weekend when this team hasn't been playing as well as it possibly can do you feel like that's some measure of of pressing do you think guys are just trying too hard uh i i do believe that for some guys i think the older guys are doing a great job of that. i mean chandler uh, on the mound late in the games has been unbelievable uh, I think our, our starters have had their ups and their downs, which is expected. I think uh, Will Frizzell, I mean, Mikey Honer behind the play has been doing an unbelievable job. Hunter Coleman, um, he's been coming off the bench, and when he's getting his time, he's doing his thing. And I mean, I think there's a lot of guys that are doing what they need to do. It's just uh, a few few more guys need to step up and, and kind of take care, ter take care when, um, like, Chandler can't be on the mound or other guys aren't up at the plate. And, and for you this season, as you've looked, especially what you've been able to do the last – five or six games, um, do you look at this and say like, hey, this is a good part of the reason why I came back because I was able to kind of showcase this and, and be this this kind of uh, con contribution. Does it uh, justify or, or vindicate that decision in your mind? Yeah, I mean, I, I came here to, one reason was to prove myself as a player and another was to win, win baseball games and to play in the SEC. I mean, I had the opportunity out of high school and things didn't work out. But um, I mean, I, I knew I, I had the ability and I just needed the opportunity. And I think I've been taking advantage of each and every opportunity, each and every game and kind of doing what I can to help the team win. I think I've done that and uh, done everything I can. So I think it's just time for a few guys to step up and I think we can, we can make a run of things late. Thanks. Hey, Ray, is it, I don't know if frustrating is the right word, but is it a little frustrating when you guys are you know, I've some days the top of the lineup's the one producing. Some days it's the bottom. You just can't seem to put that one game together where it's it's all nine guys chipping in equally to knock off some of these really really talented teams. Yeah, I mean that's kind of the game of baseball. I mean that's why you got nine guys in the lineup and it's not just three. Um, yeah, you're expecting the top of the lineup to produce every day. You're kind of expecting the bottom of the lineup not to be as productive, but at the same time, like some matchups work out. Some guys see pitchers well that, that some guys don't that day. And, and that's, that's just the game of baseball. I mean, you, you kind of, that's why three, hitting 300 in the big leagues is, is like a hall of fame number because I mean, that's three out of 10 at bat. So, uh, I mean, you can't really expect everyone to produce every day, but, uh, it would be nice to have that. Awesome. Thank you, Ray. Ray, you mentioned a little earlier that there'll be a, a full crowd there is that something you guys are looking forward to with everything you've gone through through COVID to finally play in front of what'll be a full rowdy crowd yeah I mean that's 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 why I play baseball I mean it's a lot of fun uh you, you get people talking talking crap to you and, and that, I kind of I feed off of that I, some people let the moment take the most of them and, and I kind of like to have fun in those moments and just smile and enjoy it even at Arkansas it wasn't a full crowd but I mean, that's, that's why I came back for my six years was to get those experiences and be able to see those different environments throughout the SEC. And I mean, as much as we need to win and stuff, like I've been learning to enjoy the moments and enjoy all, all, 
all the things that have been going on around us because this is my last year and I want to really have fun with it. Thank you. Ray, could you talk to me about defensive positioning because you guys are so good. Is it a combination of your experience and the coaches that puts that outfield in such good positions? Uh, yeah, I mean, Coach Steele does a great job of uh, having scouting reports on uh, tendencies for guys and stuff. And then he kind of gives me the freedom to move myself around and move guys around as I feel necessary. And I feel like, I mean, six years of college baseball, you kind of kind of see how hitters are taking their swings at pitches and what kind of guy you got on the mound and you kind of adjust to that. And I'll shade one way or another based on that. And that's kind of just, just a feel thing for me. And I kind of got a good amount of reps at it. So um, now I'll move guys like I'll move Logan Britt or Brett Minnick from right field. I'll shade him closer to me, closer to the line, a little bit in based on the hitter and the pitcher. And I mean, that's just, it's kind of a feel thing. And it just, it's been working out and it's kind of got to keep it going. Part of that feel is also the jump that you get, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the things I strive on is making sure I get a perfect read on almost every single pitch and making sure I don't miss a pitch. You can't, you don't, I probably got eight, nine balls a game, if that, and uh, you got to be ready for all 300 pitches or however many you're thrown in the game. Like, you got to be ready every single pitch, no matter if it's going to get hit to you or not. Is it nice to have a couple of six, five guys next year and Logan Britton, Brett Minnick, who can just chew up a lot of ground with those strides? Yeah, those guys, I mean, they just, they cover ground a lot easier than I do. I may cover more ground at times, but they make it look a lot easier because they, their strides are much bigger than mine. And I mean, they're great defensive guys and they're, they talk, they communicate. And, and that, that's the biggest part of it is making sure I know where they are and they know where I am, making sure we're not running into each other. Ray, also, Rob Childress talks about sometimes this team needs a spark in a game. Can defense be that spark? Absolutely. I mean, sometimes I feel like my best offensive days come from uh, having a great play on defense or helping our team out of a jam. And I think that's a lot of guys, uh, they kind of feed off of their defensive plays and take that to the plate. And I think when a guy is confident on defense, he kind of will get his those little bloop singles or balls that just finds a way through the infield. And I think – Baseball pays you back for defense uh, on offense with how you perform on defense. Ray, thank you. Thanks. Anything else for Ray? Thanks, guys. Thanks. Absolutely. Hey, coach. Um, bit another just kind of. Uh, in the gauntlet of, of SEC play coming this weekend. Um, first off, I know there, uh, Ray was talking a lot about how this might be the first kind of full crowd that y'all face this year. Is that um, something that, that y'all kind of are embracing as like, this is exciting return to normalcy or, or is it a little daunting having not seen or, or heard that kind of atmosphere um, in a long time? Oh, I think it's exciting to be back in that type of SEC baseball environment. And, you know, we felt that a little bit at Arkansas and it was a fun environment to be in and, and certainly watching Mississippi State Ole Miss series a couple of weeks ago with no limitations there. Uh, it was a great environment on television. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun this weekend as well. With with uh, the four se uh, series left in the season, how much of a must win is this series um, to try to continue to, to move forward with what you want to do? They are all absolutely must wins, Travis. We have got to go and play well. And even if we don't play well, we got to go find a way to win a, no matter what it takes. I mean, we've got to go and find a way to get it done, make a big play, make get a big hit, make a big pitch, and just find a way. Each and every game is the most important game of the year for us. Our guys know that. And it's something that we've addressed, sir. Uh, rotation going to stay the same? As of right now, yes. Uh, Dustin Signs will open in game one, and we'll go from there. But we'll announce a rotation here a bit later today or tomorrow. Okay. Um, and uh, 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 looking at Ray Alejo, who we talked to, uh, with what he's been able to produce for the team and, and for himself, is this just kind of good vindication that that coming back was a, was a great move for him? Well, certainly. I mean, he's been a great leader for us and certainly been very productive at on the field and in every facet. I mean, he's such a mature, incredible person and just thankful to have him back. And, and I hope he feels like it was 
right decision for him to come back. I, I believe I can see it in his eyes every day that he's he's proud to be here and thankful to be here and, you know, continues to give us everything he's got on a daily basis. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Coach, after what you saw from your team in Tennessee and Arkansas going back, back the last two uh, SEC series, what's the one area you feel like you guys have to tighten up a little bit to give you a chance to hang in Mississippi State? Well, we've just got to continue to put ourselves in the middle of the fight each and every time. We've got to eliminate the mistakes that we do make that end up being uh, compounding mistakes, so to speak. And, you know, when we do make a mistake, and those are going to come this weekend against Mississippi State, we have got to be able to overcome those. And, you know, it's something that we talk about here uh, each and every Wednesday, the, the shoulda, coulda, would is one of the mistakes that was made, whether it was a defensive play, uh, one pitch, you know, one at bat that we didn't cash in that, that cost us a win and inevitably calls, cost us the series. Coach, what makes this Mississippi State team so good? Well, they've got some experience at, at the top, Rowdy Jordan and uh, – Tanner Allen, those two guys are awful hard to deal with. They've got so many college at bats under their belt and they have a very good pitching staff. I mean, it's going to be the most complete pitching staff that we faced. Three very good starters, a wipeout closer and a lot of different options out of the bullpen. They can, they can make a move to the bullpen and it's not going to be a, a step down. We're going to get limited opportunities from an offensive standpoint. When we get those, we have got to be able to cash in. You mentioned their bullpen. Is it maybe a similar type bullpen to what you saw in Arkansas that was so good, or, or is it a different one? I would say it's very similar. I mean, statistically, they're better than Arkansas uh, as a whole, as a pitch and staff. Uh, so they, they have a few more options, and uh, certainly they have a closer every bit as capable as cops at Arkansas. Thank you. Anything else for Coach? Thanks. Thank you, guys. All right, we got Mason Ornelas. Hey, Mason. Uh, heading into another big weekend, what's it going to be like uh, facing or, or going out there against another really big uh, crowd in a, in a, a loud atmosphere? Um, that's what you're going to get in the SEC, especially this weekend at Mississippi State. Uh, we know what we're getting coming in. Uh, Pitching wise, offensively, defensively, they're a great team. They're great. They're greatly coached. And uh, if we just play a right game in the bullpen through our rotation, defensively, offensively, I feel like we should have no problem going into Mississippi State this weekend and getting the job done. Do you feel like uh, this was this is a as much of a must-win series as you could possibly have with with uh, the future of the postseason kind of hanging in the balance? Uh, I feel like every every series since opening day has been the must-win. Uh, like Chief says, the biggest game of the year is the next one. So we're looking forward to Friday, taking care of business then. And uh, once we do that, then look forward to sun, uh, Saturday and Sunday. So, uh, but yeah, every every series is a must win. Like We're not going to take every series for granted, just coming in, doing our thing, and hopefully come out the series win every weekend. I think from my math, last night was the first midweek game other than Prairie View that either Jaws, you, Alex, or, or uh, Moo, didn't pitch in. How important was that to get y'all some rest after, especially after last weekend and heading into this big series? Uh, any rest is good, I think, for any pitcher. I thought John that showed us was great last night, gave us five innings, and uh, I thought Wade was outstanding, shutting the door, keeping him, keeping the shutout all for the last four innings. And uh, he carried that on from uh, last Saturday. He had a great, great out against Tennessee, and he carried that over to last night. So that's big. We can have a uh, Rest for this weekend. We'll be well rested and we'll have a full bullpen before the weekend. Leaning into conference play, y'all were a team that um, were really great in strikeout to walk ratio and, and uh, uh, strikeouts per nine innings. When conference play got here across the board, a little bit more walks, a little bit more hit batters. Does that come more from just pressing and kind of was it conference play that, that kind of brought that on or? Or, or what do you think kind of caused that shift and, and, and that y'all have been able to kind of come back out of at, at times? Uh, I wouldn't blame conference play. Uh, I know it's a different mindset and different competition, but uh, this bullpen and staff uh, is capable of a lot. We preach uh, the three to one strikeout to walk ratio and uh, just getting the first guy out. And uh, we just like, uh, don't, don't let the first guy on by free base. And we feel like when we do that, they uh, have a better chance of scoring. So if we uh, can lower that, 
uh, we feel like we have a great chance of winning because pitching staff can uh, just pound the zone, trust Steve is behind us and not worry about anything else. Thanks. Mason, who taught you to change up? Uh, it was a uh, old uh, high school pitching coach, uh, Mike Munoz. He was my summer coach. Yeah, so I had small hands. And uh, my first pitching coach, uh, Bobby Witt, had taught me just this regular old change up, just three fingers on top when I was like nine, 10 years old. But uh, as I grew bigger and stronger, he had taught me that grip, and uh, I've just done it ever since. You throw that a combination of with confidence and you throw it on command, don't you? Oh yeah. I mean, I feel like that's one of my best pitches other than my fastball. I feel like I can locate it well, lefty to righties and uh, any count. I mean, two O is probably a big count for, uh, hitters see fastball. And when you throw that change up and you get a big swing and miss, you're back in the count. So change up, I just feel a lot of I'm really comfortable with. It's my kind of go-to pitch. I know coach show just loves calling it. And then it's just an out pitch. I can throw to lefties and righties. Is part of that confidence on the mound just what you said? What coach is calling and then being able to throw to a Mikey Honer or a Taylor Smith or a Kimball Schuessler? Yeah, I have confidence in all of my pitches. As for anyone in the staff, we have great pitches, great staff, and uh, whatever coach just calls, he has a scouting report right there. So he's 100% confident what he calls in. And so I'm not going to shake off if he has everything written down. So, and then Mikey, Kimball, Taylor, Brian the Plate, they're going to do anything to block it, frame it, and they're just great guys to throw to. And uh, I just have confidence whenever Coach Richards calls, I'm just going to throw it over the plate. You like to work quickly, don't you, and get into a rhythm? Uh, yes, sir. I just work on my pace, just try not to get the hitters too comfortable, just change the speed, change the tempos, and just working with my speed just to get the hitters off balance. They try to step out. <laughs> they try to mess up that rhythm, don't they? But it doesn't seem to succeed. Yeah, I just – Take a deep breath and just hopefully keep the tempo the same. They do try it, but if I can just stay calm and not let the moment or pressure get to me, just throw strikes and get it over the play and just give my, uh, my team a chance to get through the inning. Mason, thank you. Thank you. Anything else for Mason? See ya. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ed. All right, that's it. See ya. Thank you, sir.